What's up guys and welcome back to the G-Red Show. I'm G-Red. Couple things we're going to talk about today. First and foremost, a brief summary of what is going on with Barcelona and the Champions League. Not just this season, but years prior. Why they're not successful and what has to change. And then, what's going to happen with Barcelona moving into next season with key players like Ferran Torres, Robert Lewandowski, Frankie de Jong, and more. Plus, who's replacing Xavi? This is all coming up next. If anybody watched the Real Madrid vs. City match, I understand that Madrid was playing with 11 men. They weren't a man down, but they could have taken, obviously they played after, but look what they did. Look what Arsenal did to Man City a few weeks ago. When they did not want them to score, they crowded the box, they were composed, they were well disciplined, and they were calm. Arsenal didn't concede a goal, Real Madrid conceded one goal, ended up drawing, and made it through after winning on penalties to the semifinal. This is where Barcelona lacks. They have the talent to make it far. They had the talent to win. They don't have the Mbappes, they don't have the Vinicius, but they do have the talent to make it far, and they, they had the talent to win. It's not like we thought they were going to win. I thought they had a chance because they were playing significantly better this half of the season in the last two months, and they have good talent. But what we saw was poor tactics. They played nervous. They weren't composed. They weren't calm. And this is the biggest thing I'm going to take over. The red card, whatever. You still could have won that match with a red card, even though you played another 60, 65 minutes with 10 men. Horrible tactics. Horrible tactics. And even before that, Barcelona let a midfield of Vitinha, Fabian Ruiz, and Zaire Emery control the match. And Barcelona, meanwhile, has Frankie de Jong, Pedri, and Gundogan. Gundogan, a Champions League winner last season from Man City, one of their best players, one of the best midfielders in the world for the last few seasons. Pedri, going to be one of the best midfielders of this generation. That's what we hear. That's what the talent he has. Frankie de Jong, same thing. But when it comes down to it, Barcelona, I don't care that they were up one on aggregate. They should have controlled that match before the red card. They should have controlled the match. They should have controlled the game, dictated the pressure, dictated the possession, and they didn't. They were at home. They had all the capability in the world to do so, and they failed to do so and allowed their former teammate, Usman Dembele, to win man of the match, run all over them. They allowed Mbappe to score two goals, which I do think were ridiculous, and we did a pretty good job of keeping him out of the match. And then Bradley Barcola running rampant on the left wing the entire match. And then those three midfielders dictated the entire match. It's honestly an embarrassment. And it's nothing against the PSG players or their midfield. I actually think Vitinha is a very good player. With the so-called talent Barcelona has, it should have been significantly better, and it wasn't. Arujo, it's it's a tough call. I, it should have been a foul, and it's just unfortunate that it was a red card. I think it was weak, but if that's if that's how it is, you know, the rule book states, you know, if he's the last man, which I still, I never honestly went back to look to see if someone else was even or not, but he's got to be smart enough to know that it's Bradley Barcola. He's not the best finisher. He can push him onto his weak foot, at least nudge him and, and shove him a little bit so he's going outside. Ter Stegen's good enough where he's going to stop him from shooting far post. He's going to angle him to shoot on the near post. It could have been stopped. And even if he scored, it's 11 men. Barcelona, I can confidently say, if they did not get that red card, they would have been in the semifinal. They're not blaming Arujo because... Even before that, Barcelona looked shaky, but he, as the leader of the team, needs to be smarter. And you've been a center back. You've been at this level for years. You're supposed to be one of the best in the world. And it was a very, very low IQ play. And it was the reason, you know, it is the main reason why Barcelona is out. Next to the poor tactics, the lack of discipline, the lack of effort, it's it's disappointing. Which is why Barcelona doesn't win the Champions League. They won the Champions League in the past because they out-footballed these other teams. They out-possessed them, they outplayed them because of their beautiful style of football. Those days are gone. You do not have Lionel Messi anymore. You do not have Xavi, Iniesta, and Busquets. And most importantly, you don't have Messi, you don't have Suarez, you don't have Neymar, you don't have Rakitic, you don't have those players that are so technically gifted and unbelievable that they're going to pass you to death and make it impossible for you to even get the ball from them. Barcelona can't do that anymore. You can't get by with that. You need pace. You need counterattacking football and you have to attack. You need the killer instinct. That's why Real Madrid is so successful. Rarely are they the best team in the world. They're always one of the best, but they don't usually play the best football, but they win because they have the killer instinct, they're well coached, they're well disciplined, and everyone plays their role, and they know what's expected of them, and they shine bright when it matters most, and Barcelona does not. 
Barcelona had one player that cared the entire match, that played like he cared, and that was Rafinha. He was running all over the pitch. He hustled. He worked so hard. And as inefficient as he was at times this season, this last month proved to me that next to Gavi, he's the only player we can count on that cares and gets frustrated and angry when they're losing or they lose and they hustle and they give it their all. And that's what I look for from a fan, from a coach, because that's how I was when I played. I hated to lose, and Barcelona doesn't seem to care. Which brings me to my next point. I love Frankie de Jong. Absolutely love the way he plays. He's probably my favorite player. And as an unbiased person, I honestly would consider selling Frankie de Jong. He's too expensive. You could get 80, 90 million, maybe more. Someone recently said something, and now I can't stop noticing it with his play. He's so good at dribbling and quick turns and dribbling out of pressure, but his play, it slows down Barcelona. He plays backwards and he plays sideways. Rarely do we see him get the ball and push and push and push and attack. And maybe that's Barcelona's problem is they don't have a real CDM that allows Frankie to play a little more attacking, but it's very frustrating because every time Barcelona got the ball, and especially Frankie, he kept dribbling backwards, turn, 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 pass back to the keeper. It's every time. And I get it. For a lot of the match, there was 10 men, but even before, it's very frequent from him. And I truly don't think he's a make or break player in the club. If you can replace him with Zubamendi or Kimmich, Barcelona, I, I think they're going to be just fine. Pedri makes me nervous. They're not going to get rid of him. I know that, but he's just so injury prone. And every time he gets fouled, it looks like he's going to be out injured. And I just can't count on his health. So I'm not expecting him to leave. But Frankie de Jong, in my opinion, I am now, I don't want him to leave. I would love to bring in a real CDM to see how they look and how this opens up the midfield, but I wouldn't be opposed to selling him if they brought in a Zuba Mendy or a Kimmich or someone else of equal or close to that level of play. And then Lewandowski, he's got to go. You know, uh, his time is, is gone. And his form, it picked up a little bit the last month or two, but he's just, and I get it, 10 men, I'm not judging on just the match against PSG, but he's just done. You know, we can't count on him. He's not scoring consistently. He's got an attitude. He thinks he's too good at times. He's selfish. He always wants the ball, even when he's not open and he doesn't pass. He had a wide open pass to who was it? Ferran Torres and decides to shoot, goes over the net, had a huge opportunity after Barca scored their first goal, blows it over the net. He's just not the same player. And Xavi needed to bench him. Not just yesterday, but throughout the season, he needed to sit him, he needed to bench him, because he conditioned him to allow this bad play, this bad behavior, and his poor performances consistently, which results in these bad attitudes when he gets taken off, hands go up when something doesn't go his way, and now we have Vitor Roque, a supposed wonder kid who literally just doesn't play, and we have no idea what his future is going to look like at Barcelona, and it's, it's honestly frustrating. And this is what's frustrating with Barcelona. They don't have the one superstar. They don't have the Messi, they don't have Louis in his prime, right? They have the up and coming star, Lamine Mall. Kabarsi is a young defensive star, but I can't consistently, based on a performance, say Barcelona has any other stars, which is why I think every player, every player is potentially dispensable. And Frankie de Jong, Fran Torres, Lewandowski, Marcos Alonso, Nigo Martinez, probably Fati, sell, 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 sell. They're not going to be any worse off. Barcelona has been in the rebuild for the last few years. You might as well just continue to take a little step back and try and rebuild again because most likely new manager next season if it happens and it looks like Rafa Marquez, the B team manager, is the manager that it looks like might be the next in line. Barcelona's not going to come in with a new manager with Manchester City coming off a La Liga win, potentially getting Mbappe and potentially winning the Champions League again. They're not going to most likely dethrone Real Madrid. They're not winning the Champions League. There's, there's no way. So you might as well cut ties with these players Try and build the right young talent. Let Vitor Roque start. Let him play. Get rid of Ferran Torres. Go sign Nico Williams. Go sign someone else. And for the love of God, change the this possession tiki-taka style of football because it's not working. It's never going to work anymore. Messi's gone. Neymar's gone. Suarez, Busquets, Rakitic, Iniesta, Jordi Elba. They're, they're all gone, and it's never going to work again. You cannot replicate it. You don't have the talent anymore like you did then to do that. You need pace counterattack and attacking ability in Barcelona extremely lacks this extremely they need pace PSG was destroying Barcelona every time they got the ball Mbappe Bradley Barcola Dembele Colomowani has pace I mean look at these teams Doku 
fast for Man City. Holland, fast for Man City, big and strong. But then they're also just loaded with the best players in the world, so it's like they don't need it as much. Real Madrid, Vinicius and Rodrigo, Mendy outside back, Carvajal outside back, Bayern Munich, Sané, Davies, Coman, Liverpool, Darwin Nunez, Salah, Luis Diaz. You need pace. And Barcelona needs to do this. They need to alter their style of play because what they're doing isn't working. And when you are, you know, next to Real Madrid, arguably the most, the biggest football club of all time, and you haven't made a Champions League final since 2015, I'm not going to say it's embarrassing, but to not even be in the final, rarely make the semifinals anymore, struggle to make it to the quarterfinals, struggle to make it out of the group stage the last few years, putting themselves in the financial situation that they're in, it's embarrassing. And Real Madrid would never allow themselves to be in this situation, and it's it's very frustrating, and that's why they're elite, and they stay elite. First year they lose Karim Benzema, they're still in the Champions League semifinal, and they're winning La Liga, and they're going to win La Liga, they won the Super Cup. Barcelona needs to fix their entire aspect of their culture, their club, and they need to sell Some of these players, and I wouldn't be opposed if it was some of the ones I mentioned. There's so much potential, so much talent, but they always fall short. And to allow what happened against PSG in the second leg, referee, you know, couple iffy calls, but allowing that was despicable, and it needs to change. And I hope next season goes a lot better than this season with injuries, with transfers, with injuries. Hopefully they do well. Hopefully they can do something in the transfer window. Get rid of some of this dead weight. Get rid of Lewandowski's salary. Get rid of him. You could potentially get rid of Frankie's salary. I'm fine with it now. I'm almost okay to part ways with Frankie. And Xavi, I like to give him the benefit of the doubt. Feelings aside... I think it's time he's out. Barcelona needs a real manager. Carlo Ancelotti, Pep Guardiola, Luis Enrique. These are coaches that have coached at the highest of levels, that have been there for so many years, that have been successful, not Xavi. If you made it this far, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate all the support, and I hope to see you guys back here next time on the G Retro.